in the world. Well, in Bernie Madoff's case, he's in prison. And one of the sons committed suicide. So you say, well, God, you know, punished him. But what about all the people who got robbed by him? How about the thieving lawyers who stole hundreds of millions of dollars on legal fees? How come they didn't get punished? All those uh, silk glove law firms on, on, on Wall Street. They stole hundreds of millions of dollars of investor money. But they're not crooks. So I look at a Bernie Sanders and I say to myself, well, he's not alone. Why, well, you think there are none working right now? You could extrapolate from this and say to yourself, Barack Obama is Bernie Sanders on steroids. Instead of, instead of doing it to individual investors, he's doing it to the nation. I mean, he's sacking the treasury. He's spending other people's money. He's living high on the hog on Air Force One and whatever, on vacations and bankrupting the nation by spending money in order to buy votes and voters and voter satisfaction. How is he any different than Bernie Sanders? How is Barack Obama any different than Bernie Sanders, I ask myself? So that's what I'm saying to you. Now, I don't know exactly where I want to go with the show. Do you support Bernie Sanders socialist and why? Bernie Sanders, right, and I was talking about Bernie Madoff. I never met anyone by the name of Bernie I trusted, by the way. Every Bernie I've ever known is a crook. I don't know what it is. Anyone whose name is Bernie turned out to be a burner. Bernie Sanders is another one. Whenever they have that overly familiar kind of name, you know they're no good. I'll give you an example, Sandy Berger. Sandy Berger, the guy who stole secret papers in his underwear. Again, any man who names himself like Sandy or Bernie, watch out. They're coming for your wallet or your wife. If not your shoes, they'd steal your dental fillings if they could. If they were a dentist, they'd, they'd take the gold out of your mouth and put, in, and put in an alloy. If they were a surgeon, they would take out your liver and see if they could sell it on the black market. And put in an artificial liver. And yet they go to religious ceremonies, they dress well, people respect them. They go to Temple Emmanuel here in San Francisco. It's unbelievable to me. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I don't know, I wouldn't call this the golden, the gilded age. I don't know what to call it. I, I can't define what this age is. There's no single word that defines it. Bernie at his wedding in 1959. Ruth prepares for her high school prom in 1958. She will be engaged to Bernie a few months later. There she is touching up her hair. Bernie's parents at their apartment in Hollywood, Florida in 1960. They could be listeners. Ruth's parents in the late 70s at their summer cottage in Sunny Oaks near Monticello, New York. <laughs> ah, that Bernie. Ah, oh, she married well. Ah, oh, don't ask. Ah, oh, they live. You can't believe it. The boats, the cars. Bernie with his parents at his bar mitzvah in 1951. The trading floor. Bernie and Ruth at the firm's 2008 Montauk summer party. The nice puppet smiles. It looks like everyone's like favorite uncle, right? Nice Bernie. He's a nice man. Gives to the temple. Gave five million dollars last year. Catherine Far Right and Andrew at the Bernie and Ruth at the Hotel du Cap, France, two thousand and eight. He knows his Bordeaux. Oh yeah, started out humble, but he knows his wine. Yes, indeedy. Stephanie Madoff and Cabo San Lucas, two thousand and eight. Mark and his wife enjoy a quiet moment. It's interesting. I like looking at pictures, reading here and there of a biography of a Madoff family by Laurie Sandella. The book came out a few years ago. I just got it because I told you there's going to be a biopic done on HBO with Robert uh, De Niro playing Bernie. I can't wait to see it. They need me as a director to do it right. They, they miss the, the nuance. They need nuance. I understand the nuance. I understand Bernie Madoff, believe me, better than anyone in the world because I'm not him. I'm the anti-Madoff. I ran from the Bernie Madoffs my whole life. You're telling me with my genius, had I stayed in New York and invested in real estate, which I could have done in the 60s, I was invited into these things. I wouldn't do it. I had Russian friends who told me, invest in Harlem. I said, I'm not going to invest in Harlem. I said, no, no, no. We'll kick everyone out. We'll make a fortune. Well, they made a fortune. I wouldn't do it. I want to throw people out of their apartments. I had many other opportunities in that regard. I was not oriented towards... Uh, let us say, making a quick buck. I was always had my eye on something higher. So I'm not complaining. I've done well. I worked hard. But I've always known that type. And they're all around us. You think that they're not here? You think Wall Street runs on, on, on altruism? It's full of Bernie Madoffs. What, there are no scams right now? And the biggest scam artist is in the White House. How he pulled it off to begin with is astounding. But that he stays there. 
The day after he sells the Iran deal, Iran discovers they have a large store of uh, uranium. It doesn't even make it to the New York Times. You talk about scam artists. Sulzberger is a bigger scam artist than Madoff when it comes to the truth, in my opinion. Anyone who runs the New York Times and withholds a fact like that is a bigger con man than Bernie Madoff. But I'm not Ezekiel here. I'm not here to walk around and, you know, condemning other people. It makes for anger, resentment. I'm not Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Do you know that it's not right to, to criticize somebody on the basis of the skin color? Really? Uh, where'd you learn that, Sanders? I remember being in the fifth grade sort of learning about that. You know how racist he must be, that he's pushing the race card now. We'll win the White House and do well in the House. Yeah, Pol Pot, a mountain of skulls. So uh, I have to touch on this subject. I'm, I'm touching on it. I'm, I'm, you notice I'm touching on it, but I'm not doing it. Those of you know what I'm doing, but know that I'm afraid to actually do it. Is anyone listening to this show and understands the innuendo of what I'm doing here? Raise your hand. This is aimed just at you, those of you who really know. Those of you who kind of get it but don't really get it, think you understand what I'm doing. I'm talking to those who really know what I'm doing. You, you don't call the show. They don't call. They don't, actually, people who know what's going on never call the show. They're always silent. That's the thing about talk radio you don't know, is that the callers don't represent the listeners. The listeners are different than the callers. The average person doesn't sit at home and make, when they're listening to a radio show and they call a radio show to talk, they don't to call a stranger and be heard on a radio. They don't want to do it. Let's say he's a top lawyer in New York whose firm is closed because of Rosh Hashanah. And he kind of digs the show, likes it, understands it. They know that I'm understands what's going on. The other guy's not going to call. He's not going to call the show and say, you're right. I understand that we robbed hundreds of millions of dollars of the Madoff fortune that he stole. We're worse than him. What do you think? A lawyer from Wall Street's going to call and say, you're right? They're going to throw themselves out, out of a window over it? Don't be stupid. No, I don't know what I want to do today, actually, on the radio. I have so much I'm doing and want to do. I don't know how much I want to do, because I know that the audience is diminished today. It's diminished. By the restaurant last night. You can tell everything by a restaurant. <laughs> no, no, the restaurant audience last night was half and low class, too. Not only was it empty, half, half full, because of the Jew Jews were in temple, eating a free meal or whatever, I don't know. The, uh, the crowd was lower and louder in this particular place, screaming. And of course, the tiramisu, that, the fattest ones had to dip the, the spoon into the, into the dessert and then take the diabetes pill. What is it with women? I don't get that. Two glasses of Chardonnay and they're screeching in a restaurant. Now throw in the tiramisu and, a, and, a, and on a set, you need a pair of headphones to finish your, your own spaghetti. Is it any wonder I stay at home with the dog? I was with him last night. Mind, that dog has dignity. My dog is so noble. I don't know, why are we not as noble as our dogs? Never complains, never cries. I step on his toe once every few years. I almost cry, because he's so small, I, I am very cautious about it. You step like on the hair outside his toe, you know, almost hit the toe, you could kill him. Little dogs, but not a whimper, doesn't bark. He has one floor, he pees on every, every bush. If I walk him down, I don't know what it is with little dogs. I don't get that. Every bush, every leaf, I have to say to him, stop it already, you're driving me crazy. If I walk him in San Francisco, a fire hydrant, a pole, a will building, I have to say, stop it, it's dirty, you can't rub in it. Cut it out or I'll lock you in the bathroom, which I never do. I don't know if he takes the threat seriously. I think he knows English pretty good. He has a larger skill set than the average American student in the sixth grade. His vocabulary is higher than that of the average rap star, I know that. I know Teddy knows at least 100 words of English. They know 50. The F word, the F-U word, the F word conjugated 15 different ways. That doesn't count for more than one word. They can say F in 15 different conjugations. That counts for 15 words right there. Now, we had 35 more. That's the vocabulary. They make 50 million a year. What more do they need to know? But I'm not complaining. That's their business, not mine. We live in a free market society. Isn't that what you want? That's all. Eight, five, I don't know what I'm talking about. What, where do you want me to go today with the show? Do you support Bernie Sanders? I'm already bored with that. Savage, there's a retrovirus. In the, hold on, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Robert, play music. I'm going to get all the stories I was going to talk about. Just play some rock and roll. Oh, off, off, off.
Okay, here are the topics I was going to touch on, but then I realized the audience is small today because people are, I don't know, they're not, businesses are closing. Okay, YouGov poll says 29% of Americans would support a military coup. I was shocked. A, a West Point professor entertained the possibility of a military coup occurring on American soil two weeks ago, and he was forced to resign. And yet 29% of Americans would support a military coup to get rid of the viruses that are running the government. I was shocked. That's one. I'm not going to... Um, Topless protesters disrupt Muslim conference on women. Go, girls. Feminine activists bare breasts and shout feminist slogans before being manhandled out of a conference near Paris in the role of Muslim women. Bunch of Muslim throwbacks in Paris were asking whether wives should be beaten or not. You hear this? This is the Muslim religion. Don't tell me it's a religion of peace. Please, don't give me that garbage anymore. They're holding a conference in Paris, a guest country, about whether women should be beaten or not. So two women, not bad looking, by the way, age 25 and 31, jump up on the stage uh, with the, with the uh, breasts out. And one of the peaceful Muslim kicks one of the women. Then the Muslims call for their kill, uh, murder, stoned or collectively raped. You know, it's the religion of peace. Online petition says they should be raped for this. And now they're filing a claim that they were the victims of an anti-Muslim media frenzy, the Muslims, who were holding a, a, a show on whether wives should be beaten or not. Go, girls, go. I said women would save us from the Muslim, the Muslim invasion. It would be cr made for crazy feminists. Go for it. At least I was going to do that. Don't call on it. Homeschool parents sue New Jersey and allege unlawful, unconstitutional home intrusion. A mean-faced, clipped-haired head of Child Protective Services said that a neighbor called on them and a bunch of thugs with uh, badges and guns broke in their door and gave them a grilling. Ms. Marchese, clipped-haired, mean-faced, came into the house to investigate a, investigate a complaint about improper homeschooling. And the Zimmers were attacked by thugs with guns and badges. I hope they sue the, the cops and this county and Ms. Marchese and win. I hope Miss Machisi goes to prison. Let's see what else. Here's another one I was going to talk about, which I'm not going to talk about. Uh, SF corruption. Even wife beaters beat the rap if they know the judge. Came in over the weekend. Why Willie Brown took on a high-profile domestic violence case. You're not going to believe this story, what you can do with money in San Francisco. Remember I said it's the most corrupt city in America, and you didn't believe me? Then Kate Steinle got killed and nothing happened. The sheriff who let the guy out is still a sheriff. Murky Kami is still a sheriff, right? Nothing. I told you the most corrupt city in the world. Maybe in America, okay. Worse than New Orleans. This case was laid out by the Wall Street Journal. Now, you won't believe this. A guy beats up his wife, allegedly, and uh, they go to Willie Brown, former mayor, and a lawyer, and he knows all the judges, he knows the political structure in the state and the city, and he takes on the guy's case. And before, he wants a million dollars down to handle it. That's the fee that uh, he took. A million dollars. And the article says he helped digital ad entrepreneur Gurbach Shalal beat 45 felony domestic violence charges, 45 in San Francisco, after he allegedly punched his girlfriend 100 times for over a half an hour in his Rincon Hill penthouse, all recorded by in-home security cameras, he walked. He got away with it. He got away with it because Willie Brown got the case thrown out. They threw the tapes out. They said that the video was inadmissible. Can you believe you live in a country like this? They threw the video out. And the ex-girlfriend refused to testify. I wonder why. Have any idea why the ex-girlfriend wouldn't testify? There's some judge. Uh, uh, SS, I wrote, SF corruption, even wife beaters beat the rap if they know the judge. Just one man's uh, opinion. It's amazing what you can get away with. That's just on an on a, on a overt scale to know what they're getting away with. How about a, a train going nowhere in the middle of the California Valley? A train to nowhere, billions of dollars in, in rake off. These are some of the stories I was going to do. But you don't want to talk about them. Louis Farrakhan says black community should boycott Christmas. Maybe Bernie Sanders can say that next. Maybe Bernie Sanders can do that next. I believe Christmas is a holiday that's been overly commercialized. And I would say that as a nation, 
We should no longer celebrate a commercial holiday like 